Great. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Unati, and I'm an Education USA advisor. And welcome to our session under the Education USA Discovery Series Art and Design, uh, which includes uh, aspects of creative art, industrial design, UX design, graphic design, as well as architecture. Before we begin, I would like to tell you a little bit about Education USA. I know many of you must be aware of us by now. Uh, through the lockdown, we have been with you, uh, like presenting different sessions virtually. Uh, if you haven't heard about us, we are a state uh, department supported uh, organization of advising centers, which are present worldwide uh, in over 170 countries. And we have over uh, 430 uh, plus centers. We, our mandate is to provide current, accurate, and comprehensive information regarding higher studies in the US, which includes uh, associates, bachelors, uh, masters, as well as PhD degrees. Before we begin, let's just talk a little bit about what kind of value a US education brings to you and why you should even consider uh, choosing a US education. I am a US uh, university alum myself. And much like a lot of our advisors, we really believe in the value of a US education. Uh, so the first uh, value that a US education has is that uh, it has uh, it is a highly uh, reputed uh, education. It is known for its academic excellence, world class facilities, as well as its faculty. Uh, it is something that is the educational magnet of the world. India actually uh, chooses Indians choose the US as the number one uh, destination for you, uh, higher education. It has some of the finest universities in the world, which are at the top of their field, whichever subject you may be choosing. There's a lot of value in a US education, uh, such that anyone who you may be, uh, any college you may be applying for after your degree or any other employer that you may be looking at will understand the value that a US uh, graduate brings to the table. They are people who think critically, they are people who know how to solve problems as well as uh, really uh, are research and experiential or, uh, oriented uh, students. It's a very flexible education. This is something that is unique of a US education right from the bachelor's degree where you do not need to declare a major up till a year and a half into the degree. Uh, into the master's as well as PhD degree, you have a lot of liberty to try out different disciplines and uh, switch between different kinds of degrees. So this flexibility is very unique to a US degree. Uh, as you may have heard over and over again, as to repeat, uh, Education USA Worldwide follows the five steps to a US application. So our first step is researching your options or choosing the correct university that is the right fit for you. Second is financing your studies. So finding out uh, what is uh, the correct budget, what, how much do colleges cost and how you can get into the college of your dreams at the correct cost. Completing your application, this includes all of the application components. Uh, and then finally, after you do have that admit, applying for your visa and preparing for university success by preparing for departure. And Education USA guides you through all of these five steps. Uh, this webinar is concentrated on researching our options. It is for you explorers who really want to understand what kind of subjects are out there in the, in the US and what you can choose with the interests that you have. Completing your application, there are certain deadlines that you need to follow. So if you are looking to apply for uh, fall 2021, uh, you would be taking tests in, you should have already taken your standardized tests, uh, filled out, begin, uh, began filling out all the forms by now, as well as started applying for your priority deadlines, uh, which include the funding deadlines. Uh, assembling your application between September to November. And finally, if you are applying for regular decision, uh, December to January is when you will need to submit all of your applications. And this is common for a master's as well as a UG degree. Uh, you will be applying uh, around these deadlines, but do check universities for their correct deadlines. And just to give you an overview of what is required in a US application, so you would need to fill out the form, fill up the application fee, provide transcripts or mark sheets, uh, do some kind of standardized testing, uh, which includes uh, SAT or ACT, uh, as well as GRE or GMAT for graduate students, SAT or ACT for undergraduate students, uh, an English language proficiency test, letters of recommendation, application essays, 
supplementary essays, video essays, portfolios, which actually will be discussed in the um, webinar today, since these are special requirements that certain kinds of degrees uh, require when you're applying to them. And if you are an undergraduate student, you may need to submit certain financial forms, fill out a resume, uh, go for an interview, as well as provide some kind of financial proof or financial documents. So without further ado, let's jump into our webinar about art and design, which is uh, which we are going to discuss using our amazing panelists, which I would request uh, to come on, on camera. So welcome. Hi, uh, we, we do have with us today uh, Kushnam Mirza, who is the Assistant Director of Admissions at uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. Uh, she is uh, an alum herself uh, with a Master in Fine Arts for, for Illustration and Graphic Design. Uh, the Stad family welcomes students from all over the world with over 100 uh, plus programs in uh, the field of art, design and technology. Uh, they shall help you explore your passion and uh, build your creative uh, careers. The diverse student body is motivated by a faculty of professors with extraordinary academic credentials and valuable professional experience. SCAD is one university offering degrees in Atlanta, Savannah, Georgia, and online via e-learning as well, with an additional study abroad opportunities in uh, France. Each SCAD location provides a new experience and the students can choose to study in any location at any quarter during their education. So welcome, Krishna. And uh, the second panelist we have is uh, Ms. Karen Johnson. She is the International Admissions Counselor at the University of Wisconsin uh, Stout for, for over four years now. Uh, she is the point, uh, point of contact for prospective students interested in the university. Uh, she has completed a BSc in psychology and her MS in educational leadership and policy analysis with a higher education emphasis. During her time as an undergraduate student, she studied abroad in Australia and participated in volunteering program in Costa Rica. So welcome, Karen. Uh, welcome to our panel. So uh, there are two more panelists that we have from the University of Arizona. We have Ms. Anju Singh, who is the Regional Director of International Higher Education, professional with a proven uh, track record of building institutional partnerships and managing recruitment and marketing for some of the top international universities globally. She has more than 22 years of extensive experience in representing uh, different universities in different countries and has been working to help universities set up their country bases successfully. Uh, so welcome, Anju. And we also have with us uh, Mr. Luis uh, Zo, uh, Zozaya, who is a recruitment and outreach coordinator at the University of Arizona. So thank you so much, all of you, for uh, joining our panel. And we look forward to hearing from you about the different programs that our students want to discover today. So over to you. I would uh, request Kushnam to begin uh, with her presentation on SCAD. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful presentation and introduction. Um, hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, evening for wherever you're logging in from. And um, as Unati already you know, introduced me, so no words to say, but my name is very difficult to pronounce. So most of my students call me Kay, so feel free to do that. Um, I wanted to introduce you to Savannah College of Art and Design that is popularly known as SCAD around the world and the University for Creative Careers. So moving to the next slide. At SCAD, we always encourage our students to dream, dare, deliver, learn, collaborate, envision, build, plan, aspire, and even succeed in their creative fields. Next slide, Anathi, thank you. And the reason why our students join our university is because we offer more than 100 different degree programs in this umbrella and realm of design and technology with over 40 majors and 75 minors. So moving to the next slide, you're gonna see an, an entire list of the study and specializations that we offer compared to the other design universities in the US. And I want you to take a good look, and I know this sounds overwhelming, but trust me, when you see majors like architecture, animation, interior design, fashion, these are very popular and known to you all in India, 
but there are features and careers and programs that are for the future of the 21st century. And we're here to talk about um, luxury and fashion management. We're here to discuss immersive reality, which is all about augmented reality. We're here to discuss user experience design. We're here to explore the entire field of creative business leadership and des design management. So when you have this list of entire umbrella of design mixed with technology and business, you flourish really well in your creative fields. Next slide, please. Now, most of you are aware that design and technology would be a little different compared to STEM majors. And that's a common notion that is not popular to many of you. But at SCAD, we do have STEM majors in art and design. Because again, like I said, it's a mix of technology with creativity and your business professional practices. So take a look at these 13 majors that could offer you STEM extension in the US after you've completed your one year of OPT time um, after graduation. Next slide. Now SCAD is popularly known as a global university for creative careers. And the reason we say that is because, as Unati said, we have four locations around the world. So to talk about that, I'm going to head to the next slide and say that we have two campuses in the US. Atlanta and Savannah are based in the state of Georgia. And we have another campus, a study abroad location, but very idyllic, very beautiful in the Provence region of France called Lacoste. And our most popular program for the year 2020, e-learning, where we've been established for e-learning for the past 16 years, offering degrees online. But this year, particularly as I know everyone stepped into, into the virtual world, our e-learning campuses have been popular for most students internationally. So with that being said, moving to the next slide, when students get accepted to our University, you're accepted to all our locations. So you could seamlessly transition from Atlanta to Savannah to Lacoste, or even take classes online where you could be connected with our faculties, with the industrial professionals, utilize our resources whenever and wherever, 24 seven, 365. Next slide, please. So, to give you a gist, I'm just gonna show you the different ways that a student can learn at SCAD. The first one is real time on ground where students come on campus, take classes either in Atlanta, Savannah or Lacoste. The second one is SCAD now where we take real time virtual instructions. So you'd be plugged into a Zoom session just as we are right now with a faculty, professor and industrial professional across the world talk to them about internships, collaborations, and build your creative career through SCAD now. The third option would be the e-learning option where students can take classes and learn on their own time whenever and wherever you are. Next slide, please. Thank you. So I wanna talk about the future and the creative fields of the 21st century. And as most of you know that we are very aware of what applications and technology can do. And this particular program called User Experience Design, also commonly known as UX Design, combines science and art with technology to build a field in user experience. User experience is an ever evolving technological field. And the program at SCAD, that is the UX Design for Bachelors of Fine Arts, was developed in collaboration with Google. First, so moving to the next slide. Thank you. From mobile devices to, let me say, intelligent uh, clothing, automobile interiors, or even healthcare and finance industries, UX designers create experiences that are approachable, meaningful, and memorable to customers. So in all of its sense, this career puts the user first. Next slide, please. SCAD students, they find their inspirations through our amazing 
think tank studios where robotics, prototyping, electronics, AR, VR labs, and user testing shops are available to you at any given time. And so I know that students keep asking me this question that how would you access all of these availabilities on the e-learning platform? And to your surprise and mine as well, students have been doing amazing even online and then transitioning to our campus locations for the next year whenever they're able to travel. Next slide, please. SCAD students have access to pr premium tools at their fingertips. With cutting edge resources, connected industrial professionals where you have to network with the right people in the industry, you can capitalize on every opportunity to be the best in the field. And as I always tell all my students, to be the best, you have to learn from the best. So with this being said, to the next slide, every year SCAD hosts and supports famous signature events like our SCAD Gaming Festival, SCAD Animation Fest, but our most important pl platform or opportunity for students is the collaboration that we offer our students while they're studying at SCAD. So there's a program called SCAD Pro that is a company collaboration where students work on live projects with Fortune 500 companies, for example, Uber and SCAD students are currently building the future of flying cars. So for students join to, joining us today, if you Google search or YouTube SCAD plus Uber, you're gonna find the entire concept of Uber Elevate that's gonna be launched in the year 2022. Imagine being a part of these programs and collaborations at the age of 18 or 20 and having these platforms to utilize to launch your new products, showcase exclusive demos, and even discover your own future. Next slide, please. Now, I wanted to just put this slide in because Andrew Siebert is a friend of mine who got his dream job through a SCAD Pro collaboration and now is changing the future of augmented and virtual reality at Google. So what I wanted to say is that career preparation is the prime focus and heart at SCAD. Next slide, please. So questions about what kind of careers do you even achieve through user experience design? Well, these are just a few to begin with, but this entire degree of UX design can you know, flourish into every field that we have today. So as I mentioned, it's, whether it be healthcare, whether it be finance, you're using applications on your phone, whether you're using services, everybody requires a user experience designer. Next slide, please. And the, another good thing is our stellar number performance of 99% employment success rate, where our students have received jobs through SCAD, SCAD Pro collaborations and have their dream companies come to them to create new products taken to market within the first 10 months of graduation. Next slide. So coming to our most important question, how do you apply to SCAD and how do you get through? Well, the process is really simple. It's an application online, as simple as scad.edu slash apply. But for all our undergraduate students, the process is way simpler than it, you could even imagine. We're only gonna require your transcripts from your ninth, 10th and 11th grades and one proof of English proficiency. Now, when I know when we say proficiency for English, I understand that all our students coming from India are very fluent and learn in the medium of English. So we have even accelerated and made it easier for you guys where if you're not interested to give exams like SAT or ACT or TOEFL or IELTS, that's okay. As long as you can provide a letter from your school stating that your medium of instruction has been English, we could check off that box for the proof of English proficiency. Can't get really simpler than that, right? But then additional to your grade sheets and the letter, we do have, you know, opportunities for you to expand your scholarship potential. 
and that could be based off your portfolio and resume. So a portfolio at this very moment is a simple collection of 10 or 20 best artworks, and it could be from any genre. The only reason being we're not expecting you to learn about, say, graphic design or industrial design or uh, user experience design before you start your classes at SCAD. So at this moment, we're looking forward to your creative inclination within the umbrella of art, design, or technological fields. So whether you have photographs, you have sketches, you have watercolor paintings, all of that is accepted in your portfolio piece. But I'm only going to say that put your best foot forward because the portfolio and resume lead to scholarship opportunities. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, based on your transcripts, you would be graded for academic scholarships and the opportunity for achievements can be based off the supplemental documents on portfolio resume. We do have many other scholarship opportunities and I really can't list all of them here because we're short on time. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. We do conduct interviews. We talk to the students about their passion and their creative inclinations and do have multiple scholarship grants. So I'm just gonna you know, move to the next slide and say that let's connect. That's my email address with my phone number. I am as tech savvy as all of you are. I know I sound old and I look old, but when it comes to Facebook, Instagram, do feel free to reach out to me on those social platforms or a traditional email would do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kushna, uh, for that wonderful presentation. And uh, we will chat again at the question and answer round in the end. Uh, I would um, now like to uh, invite Karen to come and give her presentation. Hello, everyone. Thanks again for joining, as Kay mentioned. Um, I am here to talk about uh, both graphic design and interactive media and industrial design. So one of those being a very popular program and very well known where industrial design, many students, many of you may not have heard of. Um, so I'm from the University of Wisconsin Stout. We're also located in, of course, the US um, in Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin. So near Chicago, near Minneapolis. Um, we are a polytechnic university, which I will talk about um, a little bit before I talk about the programs, just so you are aware of what kind of teaching style um, you would be experiencing with these programs. Next slide. So here are the art design and graphics programs um, at the University of Wisconsin Stout. So we are very, um, we both have art and design. We have mostly undergraduate programs, but we do have a design um, master of Fine Arts. So if you're thinking down the road, you'd maybe like to be a professor um, and teach art or design, that's definitely a program you'd want to enroll in to become eligible to be a, a professor. But with our Design Master of Fine Arts, you are able to, you know, really tailor that to you. So, you know, many of the programs here that we're talking about today are design programs, including the graphic design and the industrial design. So you can choose what kind of design you want to get a master's in, and we can really make that master's of fine arts program specific to you and what, what kind of design you want to study. Um, you know, we have, you know, animation, we have fashion, we have game design. Um, I'm going to talk about our gra the graphic design interactive media program in the U.S. and the industrial design. We also have interior and studio art. Next slide. So something very important about our university that really helps us stand out is we are a polytechnic university, as I mentioned. So we are a four year for a bachelor's degree. So we are a liberal arts. So where SCAD is, you know, very specialized in those art and design programs. We are also, you know, a four year public, you know, liberal arts university as well. So you know, you students are getting that that really specialized art um, experience and, and bachelor of fine arts, but they're still getting the, the opportunity to take classes in different subjects, whether that be in technology or engineering. Um, 
where those can also really benefit you in, in the field of art and design. So here you can see that, you know, with those mix of classes, we really are hoping that a student can get a really well-rounded experience while still being able to specialize in the field of art and design. So as a polytechnic, we are focused on three things. Um, we're focused on their careers. So we have a 98.8% .8 employment rate. So, you know, those students are finding jobs within their field within um, six months of graduation. We have our career art advisory board for every uh, program on our campus. So we're making sure that our curriculum, so all the courses that you are taking um, are indeed up to date and you're not taking courses that are no longer relevant to the field. And we also, what students are mostly gonna see at our university is the applied learning aspect. So we have three times the labs than classrooms. So as I'm gonna mention later on is we really do think that students learn best by doing, right? So an example of this is riding a bicycle. So if you're gonna learn how to ride a bike, are you going to read in a textbook about how to learn um, about how to ride a bike? Or are you just gonna get on a bike and, and keep trying until you get it? I think most, hopefully you all know the answer, but you're typically gonna wanna just ride the bike, right? Um, so we have that same philosophy at our university. We think it's very important that, that our students are really getting in the field, getting internships and getting that real life experience and really getting an opportunity to network and, and work on the most up-to-date um, problems and help solve those. And then collaboration as well. We have, you know, over 900 partnerships with different um, businesses and industries across the entire country. That and those are companies are coming to our university twice a year for one of the largest career fairs in the Midwest. Next slide. So here's just my contact information. I know that you also have this information shared with you, and email is definitely a great way to reach out to me. We also are on WhatsApp if you have questions or prefer that. And we are on Instagram. Social media is a great way to learn more about student life. Um, so for all these universities, that's a great way to see more about student life um, and see what our students are up to, where, you know, if you're going on the website, that's gonna be more the information about the academics. Next slide. So now I'm gonna talk about industrial design. So first is, you know, do you like solving problems? Did you, maybe when you're younger, or maybe you still do, like taking things apart and putting them back together? Um, this is a great combination of art and design um, or art design and engineering kind of coming together. So you do help get to design products. So another name for this is product design. So, you know, what can you design in this kind of program? You can design, be a product designer. You can design furniture. So you can see in that um, bottom right photo, you know, one of our students created um, table and chairs and you can actually fold up the chairs and put it inside the table. Maybe you live in a smaller space um, and you only want to take that out when guests are around. You can design fancy furniture like that. You can design medical devices, footwear. So we have student designing shoes. Um, we recently had one of our, our students go to Germany and, and it was Nike. Um, you know, you can design bicycles like for Harley Davidson, we have students designing motorcycles. Um, sunglasses in um, one of Beyonce's music videos. We had our student create sunglasses that were worn across in the whole music video that I'm more than happy to share with you all if you're interested. Um, so there's a lot of things you can design. It's not just designing one thing. You can really, you know, you can really go anywhere with this program. Students are able to design anything that they're interested in. Um, you can see then here are some classes that you would be taking. So most of these courses are going to be art and design, so like form and visualization, design for the manufacturer, um, you know, 2D and 3D. We're also going to take a three engineering courses like engineering graphic, fundamentals, surface modeling, solid modeling, rendering. So you will be taking a few engineering courses just to get the background and get more of the concept and the modeling um, for these products, right? So it's a great way if you are, you know, really do like solving problems and, and designing products. 
Next slide. So here are some employers that you could be working for, for example. Um, of course, the, the opportunities are endless. So here are just some huge examples of where some of our students go and what you could be doing. So you can see that they're all across the board. There's Harley Davidson Motorcycles, there's 3M, Window Company, um, which in the Midwest where we're located, everyone knows Anderson Windows, um, Rave Sports, Microsoft. So you can see they're all across the board. Um, we have a lot of student resources as well. Um, I will save this for um, in just a moment. I will bring these as these are going to be applicable to all of our programs. Um, next slide. And actually, I do want to mention too for industrial design too, it is a lot of you know contemporary product design. Um, one really neat example is recently we had a student from that program go to NASA. Um, in Texas, and they helped create a logo for the Space Grant um, Consortium. So really wonderful opportunities, although we are a smaller, maybe not as known university, we're getting some great opportunities. Then I wanna go on to graphic design. Um, so this is anything, if you just like designing, you know, whether it be posters or packaging or logos or websites, um, it can be anything from like communication design, which is more like the advertising, publications, packaging, motion graphics, or more towards the interactive design. Maybe that's more mobile apps or you know, working on the web, on like interactivity across the websites, or maybe it's screen-based media like social media. So there are, you know, we are moving more towards like, also okay from Scad mentioned towards the 21st century. So we really do, you know, really incorporate technology in all of these programs um, because it really is relevant and in today's um, industry. So here you can really design anything like I mentioned, brands, you can design logos, you can be work in advertising or marketing, you can be a web designer. Um, again, you're going to be taking a lot of a wide range of courses from signage and exhibitions um, to you know mobile application courses, typography, two and 3D design web design, user experience. You can see here some different courses and interesting courses that consumer psychology. So again, really getting that well-rounded education, that consumer psychology really is from a different field, but really relevant and really important to understand how the consumer is thinking so you know what to design and how to design it and know what's needed. Um, so you can see here, there's many different things you can do. You can design mobile apps, there, you can design artwork or exhibition, you can design labels and, and all that for, for bottles of wine. Um, there's a lot of different things here. Next slide. So some different employers, I know Inno Park is very relevant in India. We have, you know, employers or students that are going there and interning and working after graduation. Um, you can see that, you know, there are a wide range of, of places you can also work here. Every university, for example, has a graph, at least one graphic designer. Many have way more than that, um, helping with marketing and helping with designs, both on the website and in brochures and, and printing, printed material. Um, so we really do have a wide range of, of employers and opportunities, again, for our students, which is why we design our programs like this. So you do have a lot of opportunities. You're not stuck trying to find a job um, with a very specific major. So like here again, we've had students um, recently create like a, a patch, a mission patch for a European astronaut in Germany while they were studying abroad. So even as an international student, you have the opportunity to come study at Spelt. And then if you want to go study in a different country for a semester, a year or longer, you can also study abroad um, in another country. So we have a lot of student resources, you know, not just for this program, but for all of our art programs. We have, like I mentioned, one of the largest career fairs in the Midwest. And that's every semester, anywhere from 500 to um, 700 companies from all across the country are coming to campus for two days, once a month two times or once in the fall and once in the spring um, to come hire our students, meet our students and, you know, interview and, and really see their projects. Um, but in addition to that, we have an additional 
Art and Design Week, where we bring in, you know, people from the industry, from different companies to come in and we provide networking opportunities just for art and design students. Um, so you kind of get actually a lot, you know, even more help and more resources than just any other student that is not in the art program. You are taught by all professors that have a master's of fine arts. You're not being taught by other students. So you really are being taught by the best and who are also work, have their own, some of their own art galleries or still, you know, have shows on their own art shows. So they really also have some great networking opportunities for our students. Um, as I mentioned, we have free times with studios and lectures. So it will be very rare that you are in a um, lecture hall. You're gonna be in those studios. Um, pretty much all the time. And then again, we're Polytechnic University, so you're getting that hands-on experience. You're getting you know, uh, you know, know, more opportunities than many um, to get internships and networking opportunities. We do have up to $7,500 in scholarships to assist um, with international student fees. Um, we do not provide a um, art portfolio before admission. We do, you know, we will let you come to campus in our art and design program, then once you're on campus, work with you to create an art portfolio, just because we are aware that not every school in the world is going to have the art courses offered. So we understand that not everyone comes from the same background. So we are gonna give the students the opportunity to come here first, um, take some classes in art and design and then work on their portfolio. Um, if you do, for sake of time, I won't go through admissions or tuition or scholarships, but again, you'll have my contact information. So if you were interested or just had more questions about a program, please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help. All right, thank you. Great, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. And it's really nice to know the kind of opportunities um, in graphic design as well as industrial design. And I really dearly miss the Midwest. That's exactly where I did my degree and I worked after, uh, after studying. I also worked in an advertising agency. So all these creatives are the ones who come into through these uh, job yeah. fairs and everything. So it's very mm -hmm. interesting uh, to work with people who have a creative mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so with, with that, I would definitely uh, chat with you more, uh, Karen, uh, in the question and answer round with all our students who I'm sure have a lot of questions for you. And now Absolutely. I would like to uh, invite uh, the University of Arizona to come on camera and um, uh, present, to, uh, present to our students about architecture. Great. Thank you, Anati. Uh, as uh, Anati introduced initially, my name is Anju Singh. I'm based uh, here in Delhi. I work for University of Arizona. Next slide, please. So uh, a little bit about ourselves before I hand it over to uh, Lewis to talk about architecture in more detail. So University of Arizona is a public research university, which was established way back in 1885 uh, in a city called Tucson. Uh, now the state of Arizona, if you know, is in the so southwestern quadrant of the US map. And the city of Tucson has about a million uh, population, a small city, laid back, very friendly. And uh, which is, and of course, at one point, it was also ranked as one of the most affordable and livable cities in the world, uh, in, in the country. When we talk about uh, our rankings, of course, Indian students are generally interested in knowing more about that. So, of course, uh, we are in top 40 for public universities. If uh, those of you who are interested in research, we are ranked uh, in top 20 research institutions in the country. And of course, nowadays with the COVID going on, a uh, lot of uh, courses have been, uh, you know, transferred online. We all are like uh, sitting in our homes and attending classes. So uh, when we talk about the online degrees, especially at an online uh, bachelor's level, we are ranked number 11 in the country. So when we talk about the courses, we offer more than 140 courses uh, in the university and uh, at an undergraduate level. And especially at grad level, we have more than 200 plus uh, courses which are available for students to choose from. And of course, that includes research options as well. Uh, in the university, 120 nationalities are represented. So if you will definitely have a very uh, amazing multicultural uh, environment to study in. Uh, next one, please. When we talk about uh, the current situation, uh, what happened in the month of May when uh, you know the 
university, we were talking about uh, various things like what needs to be introduced. I think University of Arizona was one of the institutions to address the situation by launching global locations. So what it basically means is that this is something which has not been introduced because of pandemic, because this was something which were uh, being planned for last two through three years, and it's just coincided with the pandemic. So what it offers basically is the students who are interested in starting their studies, they can start in India, sitting at their home. Uh, you can, of course, would be you know attending either online classes or you will be uh, attending the recorded lectures. And uh, you do have an option of starting this degree online and study for next two years here in India. All right. So whenever you're ready, whenever the situation improves, you can take your course back to Tucson, either after the first semester, second, third, or maximum after the fourth semester, you have to be sitting in the Tucson to pursue or continue your studies. And while you are in India, you can definitely study at home. That's the safest uh, option considering the situation right now. But we do have uh, uh, various facilities which are available to our students through our partner institutions. Like uh, in North, if uh, there are students who are joining us from North of India, we have tie up with OP Jindal Global University to use their facilities, libraries, or tutoring facilities. We also have tie up with Amrita University, which has about six locations in the South of India. And you can use those campuses to uh, definitely uh, you know, continue your studies. And the latest addition in the partnership list is 91 Springboard. Uh, I'm not too sure how many of you are aware of this, but it is a co-working space. And they would these particular centers, which uh, are there in 27 locations, if I'm not wrong, in India, would be working as study centers for University of Arizona students. So while you're studying in India online, you can use these facilities wherein you will be able to access free Wi-Fi, cafeteria, you'll be getting given a dedicated place to sit and of course, meet your friends to do some uh, group projects together. So that is something which has been very, very exciting. And a lot of students who have started their studies in our fall intake of 2020, we started on 24th of August, are really liking this idea. And we are hoping that they will be using this facility in future as well. If you really need to know more about uh, what this program is all about, of course, that's the newly launched uh, portal, everywhere.arizona.edu. I would encourage you to go there and find out if your desired degree is offered under this option or not. Just to let you know, and just to add here, the deadline for 2021 is 3rd of May for all our undergraduate degrees. And for graduate degrees, mostly it would be in the mid of January. Of course, under current situation, a lot of changes are happening. A lot of departments are dropping their GRE and GMAT requirement as well. So if you really want to know if a particular department where you are interested in applying is uh, offering you that particular uh, you know, waiver or not, you are encouraged to visit the website or get in touch with me. I'll be leaving my contact details in the chat box a bit later. So thanks for your attention. Uh, now over to Louis. Thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate that. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Luis Zaya. I'm the Recruitment and Outreach Coordinator for the College of Architecture, Planning, and Landscape Architecture, or CAPLA, as we like to call it for short. Um, it's my pleasure to present um, our college alongside these other amazing schools. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to start off by talking about our under, undergraduate degree majors um, and what's available at CAPLA, starting with the Bachelors of Architecture, um, because that's our most popular undergraduate program. Um, and is very design focused. Uh, it's a five year NAB accredited degree. What that means essentially is that it is a professional degree at the undergraduate level. Um, bachelors of architecture degrees are a little harder to come by uh, in the States, but just know that these sort of programs really prepare you for the field of architecture um, and help you to become a, a licensed architect um, in the United States. Uh, so students who typically do the bachelors of architecture go directly into the field of architecture. You're not required to do a master's degree um, after this program. Uh, every, all the skills, all the practice, you learn that within the, these five years. In order to get accepted into the bachelors of architecture, you do not need a portfolio. Um, currently, we're only looking at GPA for the admittance into this program. So once you're admitted to the U of A, as long as you uh, had a, at least a 3.3 GPA, um, in high school, uh, you'll be accepted into the program. Now, if your GPA falls just below that mark, um, you're still encouraged to apply. 
um, because we can accept students if they fall between like a 2.9, 3.9, or excuse me, 3.3 GPA mark. Uh, this program is very hands-on, very focused on the practice of architecture and working with our professional faculty, a lot of which are licensed architects uh, and kind of really um, kind of problem solving in design and in the uh, usage of buildings. Uh, it's, as you can see from the curriculum here, there's design studios, which you'll do every semester uh, that really kind of help focus and explore your ideas of uh, design um, thinking about space, thinking about light, thinking about, you know, the sort of site engineering, thinking about, um, you know, who you're designing for, um, this history and theory uh, that pertains to, you know, architecture all over the world and how architecture has evolved throughout the day, uh, throughout the eight years and days. Uh, there's practice and management. So a big part of architecture is balancing your projects uh, and meeting those deadlines and, and kind of uh, how to, um, how to establish the process. Uh, there's building technology. So again, because this is a professional program, uh, you are getting um, that experience in using the software that is used in the industry. So programs such as Revit, uh, you know, SketchUp, Rhino, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, these are programs that you use very much in architecture. And so you start to get uh, a grasp on that. There's research and application. We are a sort of research-based uh, university. So that still applies to architecture. Um, so it doesn't matter if, it, you know, if you're building uh, uh, an area or building in India or Mexico City or New York City, you know, the architecture is going to look a little differently. So knowing how to kind of um, learn in your environment and applying those skills is, is very important. And every student has to kind of go through that, um, typically through their senior capstone. So that's the Bachelor's of Architecture, very design focused, very hands on. Uh, moving on to the Bachelor's of Science in Sustainable Built Environments. This is a four-year uh, program that we have at Capla. Um, it is focused much more on the science because it's a Bachelor's of Science. Um, so it's a lot more focused on the research methods. Um, but I do like to include this on this, on this list because, uh, I mean, obviously it's our, one of our undergraduate programs, but there is some design in that. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, in order to be admitted into this program, students should have at least a 2.7 GPA on a 4.0 GPA scale. Um, students whose GPA falls just below that, they're still, again, encouraged to apply um, as you could be accepted uh, upon review. Um, students who go into this program are very fascinated about the science and very fascinated about problem solving um, in a scientific manner. And there's also um, some emphasis areas that you can do with the Bachelor's of Science in Sustainable Built Environments. So um, focusing on sort of uh, the different aspects of uh, problem solving through science in like sustainable landscapes, in sustainable buildings. So thinking about like energy conservation, um, thinking about uh, real estate development and how to do that in a sustainable manner. Um, uh, bachelor's, this Bachelor's of Science in uh, Sustainable Built Environments is going to touch on all those subjects. Uh, but there is some design that goes into it. So you are still learning how to use the programs um, to develop these sites, to develop um, these plans um, in, a, in a sustainable manner. And you are learning that sort of research and, and, and all that. Um, students, they'll touch on uh, topics such as environmental studies, communication and presentation. Um, again, uh, there's the design aspect of it, history of built environments, and there is a required internship with this program. So students are really kind of immersing themselves in the field um, and, and it really helps with that sort of career pathway, uh, whether they're gonna look to become a, a researcher, um, work at, at an architectural firm as a designer um, or go into a grad school program, which I'll, I'll mention on the next slide. And with this program as well, there's a senior capstone. So kind of capitalizing on all the skills that you uh, gather and really putting it together into one final project that kind of goes into your portfolio. So when you move on to um, the career side of things. And lastly, there's the Bachelors of Landscape Architecture. This is our newest program at Capilla um, on the undergraduate side of the house. It is a four year program and we are currently seeking uh, lab accreditation um, because it's a, a new program, you know, that, that accreditation can uh, come uh, about four years out um, after we graduate our first class. Uh, and it is a very design focused program, much like the Bachelors of Architecture and much focused on the uh, pathway into the field of landscape architecture. 
So with this program, there's currently no GPA required, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want you to get the idea that this is somehow uh, easier or lesser than, than the other two programs. Uh, it is based off our Masters of Landscape Architecture program. So it is, some students might still find it kind of uh, challenging who uh, aren't prepared to go on to a design field, but obviously a lot of you guys probably are, you know, looking for that sort of studio experience. Um, and you'll get a lot of that with the uh, landscape architecture program, but you'll also touch on some very um, unique subject areas such as site engineering, landscape construction, landscape ecology, working with plants, um, and then finally doing a senior capstone. So those are just to give you a kind of glimpse of what our undergraduate programs are. They all bring their very unique um, classes and curriculum and experiences uh, with them. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to touch on the graduate programs that we have here because uh, with SBE, or excuse me, the Bachelor's of Science of Sustainable Built Environments, we call it SBE for short because it's a lot easier. Um, there's a pathway to go into a uh, master's or graduate field. Uh, and I, I don't think it's ever too early to start thinking about a graduate degree if that's something you want to do, especially if you know you want to go into a specific career such as, you know, architecture or landscape architecture or urban planning, which often requires a master's degree. So with the accelerated master's program, you could do, uh, you could do uh, SBE and then start taking graduate level courses your senior year. And then that's when you'll really kind of dive into the, the uh, design aspect of, of these degrees, such as the master's of architecture. So just to make sure you're all aware of that, we have the, these incredible graduate degrees um, that are uh, available to you as well. Next slide. So I want to take a moment to talk about the culture of Kapla. Um, we're very focused on keeping students engaged from their first day at Kapla all the way through their graduation and even beyond as alumni. Um, one of the ways that we do that is through the job interview fair. This is an opportunity where students can sit face to face with uh, employers and it's specific only to the College of Architecture, Plan, Landscape Architecture, and they get to interview with firms. So whether it's an architecture, landscape architecture, or a firm that focuses on sustainable practices. Um, and they get to um, practice their interviewing skills. But a lot of times it leads into uh, part-time jobs, internships, or full-time jobs. Um, and it's just a great way to bridge your education with your career. And as you heard me mention before, you know, internships are a big part of the SBE program. A lot of our architecture students, they get internships over the summer as well. Um, and a lot of that comes through the job interview fair. We're also very focused on hands-on design, especially the architecture program. So you heard me mention that you're, you know, you're gonna do a studio class every semester where you're kind of exploring your ideas, where you're you know, putting together models, where you're uh, you know, doing renderings of your designs. Um, and a lot of that supplemented with some of our other classes um, and uh, sort of uh, our uh, resources on site. So we have this 2,700 square meter uh, facility where students can practice using different materials, whether it's, you know, wood or concrete or plasters, you know, uh, grinding and welding a metal, you know, you are learning how to structure materials alongside our faculty. Um, so you get to really explore those. And I think it's a big part of our, our, our curriculum in architecture. Um, there's also a design studio where you can uh, build a, you know, custom design home that you as a student get to, um, do alongside your classmates. So every semester they're, they're designing and actually building in the city of Tucson. Um, they've also done uh, some incredible public structures before. Uh, one on campus, it's just amazing, this you know, large uh, sort of iron dome that the students welded together and, and they designed themselves. So you're getting that real world experience again. We have about 10 college clubs and organizations within Kapla, specifically for our Kapla students to help um, really uh, find a community for all our students uh, and touch on the professionalism in architecture. So, uh, you know, the American Institute of Architecture Students is a great way to kind of, uh, kind of work with, you know, other architecture students, um, meet, uh, you know, with different firms. It's a great way to kind of uh, just expand on your portfolio and, and kind of go on the practice. There's Women in Architectural Society. Um, there's the International Student uh, Club of Kapla where students from all over the world are, are come together and kind of meet with one another. Uh, and those are just a few examples of what we have at Kapla. I think the, a, a big part of uh, the University of Arizona is 
because it's a, a larger school, you get all, all sorts of resources on campus. So whether you're looking for, you know, on campus employment, if you're looking for, again, on internship opportunities, there's just different events going on every day of the week uh, at, at the University of Arizona. So um, I think that's a, a great combination because with Capital, it's a, a smaller, more tight knit cohort of students and it's really tight knit community, but you also get this larger college experience as well. Um, and we're always uh, kind of thinking about improving the skills of our students, whether it's soft skills, you know, presenting, communicating, collaborating with one another, with no, one another or technical skills. So um, you heard me mention Revit, which is a industry grade software when it comes to architecture, but as well as like SketchUp or ArcGIS, which gets used uh, primarily in the landscape architecture and SBE students. Um, so we're all like, really focused on, on kind of leveling up those skills as well. And again, we have our professional degrees, you know, so uh, our degrees really help students go into that field, whether it's, you know, architecture, landscape architecture, real estate development, uh, urban planning. Um, it really prepares students for those careers. Um, that's not to say that our architecture students haven't moved on to other creative um, industries. So we've had alumni to um, go work at Nike. We've had uh, alumni come set designers. Um, Scott Pask is a Tony Award winning set designer. He came out of Capla. Um, we have uh, alumni that have gone into like 3D motion graphics and they did that with our, our architecture degree, which is kind of, uh, you, you wouldn't really think of moving into those sort of creative careers, but uh, they managed to do that. And I think it really speaks volumes of, of what our students able to accomplish. So uh, next slide, please. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I look forward to, you know, working with you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Anju. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lewis and Anju, for this very wonderful presentation on architecture. And I think this really brought to life the different types of architecture that one can pursue. Um, without further ado, let's uh, jump into the like, I'll just tell you a little bit of information about Education USA and how you can contact us before we uh, begin our Q uh, question and answer round. And while I do that, uh, please feel free on all our portals, uh, wherever you're joining us from, to begin typing in your questions to any one of the panelists. If you want to address it to a particular panelist, you can name them uh, in our chat boxes in Zoom, uh, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. So please type in as many questions as you have to connect with Education USA. Uh, social media is one of uh, the very good ways of connecting with us. And here are all our handles. Uh, you can contact one of our seven centers. We have seven centers in India and I will share the contact details shortly with you. Um, we do have a mobile app as well. Uh, we also um, have uh, like if you do want to uh, WhatsApp our centers or call our toll free number, you can do that as well. A mobile app is very useful because you will get notifications if you download it. So here are seven centers. I'm located out of Kolkata, but please do contact the center nearest to you. And these are all working email IDs and numbers. So uh, you can WhatsApp the ones that are mentioned and uh, you can find out our working hours uh, on this link. We do have a one-on-one -on -one student membership as well, uh, which are available in all seven centers in different capacities. So do contact your center to find out if you need one-on-one -on -one guidance. And before uh, I actually end my little speech, uh, we do have this undergraduate university fair where you can meet many, many more university representatives from the US and it's happening tomorrow. So if you are a bachelor's aspirant, I don't know why you would not sign up for this fair because you can interact with so many uh, university representatives, chat one-on-one -on -one with them, create a good first impression, find out what universities you are applying to and make sure that you visit their booths. We also have a visa officer uh, from the US embassy join us on Saturday evening. So you can get those official qu uh, questions answered as well. We also have some testing agencies join us. So we have TOEFL IELTS and college board as well. So you can chat with all of us and we will be available with a lot of fun webinars and sessions tomorrow and day after. So this is the registration link. And I'm sure if you have attended any of our webinars, you must have got that information in some form or the other. So I would like to invite all of our panelists back on camera. And um, this is again, 
the contact details of everyone compiled over here. So you can feel free to email uh, the panelists. I will just read out one by one uh, some of the uh, questions. Uh, we only have a few uh, till now. So please, everyone, I would request you to uh, continue typing in any interesting questions that you may have. Okay, so the first question is from uh, Ritika uh, Reshing uh, Ghani. And uh, she said that she is currently a second year uh, student of product design at GLS Institute of Design in Ahmedabad. And she wants to know if she can participate in the pathway program in any of these universities. So I guess if anyone um, does have that program or a similar program, um, you could um, answer that question. Yeah, so um, I know I actually chatted with her already too, but it, you know, for any student too, who maybe has a similar question or attending another university. Absolutely. Um, I know I can't speak for the other two universities, but I'm sure they're very similar and that we, you know, very transfer friendly university. We do accept transfer students. So, you know, we are more than happy to help look at your, your mark sheets and, and let you know what courses will transfer to our university, what, um, and then how many years you would have left at our university. So that's definitely an, um, another option too. So if you are interested in transferring, you can reach out to, to any of us, whatever program you're interested in. But for product design, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, Ritka has been very proactive in texting up uh, everyone here. So yes, <laughs> similar to Karen for SCAD as well, we do have transfer uh, applicants joining our bachelor's program where you do have the opportunity to transfer your credits from uh, your current university to SCAD. Great. And anything to add from University of Arizona? Yes, I'll say for transferring to capital programs, if you're looking to go in, uh, specifically into architecture, uh, it's a five-year program regardless of the credits you bring in. So um, just know that usually if you want to start at another institution, it's going to be five years, you know, even if you bring in that credit. So Sometimes we recommend uh, that students go into the Sustainable Built Environments program first because that one's a little more transfer friendly. Uh, and then as you saw me explain the AMP process, uh, we usually ask students to kind of go that way because it, it's, it kind of, um, it'd be about four and a half years or four and a, uh, yeah, four and a half years uh, rather than a full five years if you want to go right. into like architecture, so. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. And this is a very commonly asked question about transferring and it definitely, this shows that it's different for different universities. So do contact the university representatives and it, the number of credits really depends what transfers and what doesn't depending on where you're originating from, what classes you've taken. So it is an ongoing conversation and they are like university representatives are very responsive. So please do contact them. So uh, the next question is from Nandita and she asks, uh, she says, hi panelists, how important is it to work, uh, to have work experience before going in for a master's degree in UI or UX or interaction design? So I think this is a question for Kushnam um, and a little bit for Karen as well. Sure, so just to begin with, um, well, particularly for master's program, it's not just work experience that we're looking for. We need to see your basic skill sets set within the field. Mm. Uh, and that could be done through your portfolio um, submission. So whether even if you're trying to apply for a master program directly after your undergraduate degree, that's a possible option. Um, instead of working in the industry for maybe a couple of years and then doing masters. Um, so, you know, particularly for her, I would say it's it's a hit or miss. It's really not the mandate that we need, but we need to just kind of see your skill set set in the bachelor's curriculum, um, and uh, you could apply for a master's okay. even without work experience. Yeah. Great. So uh, thank you for that answer, and um, kind of riding off on that, she has a follow up question. Maybe. Um, she says, how should I go about making a UI or UX portfolio for a master's degree admission? So exactly to your question. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I know this, this answer sounds, sounds really redundant, but my, you know, 
answer to that is research every university's portfolio guidelines and requirements because it depends per university of what they're looking for. Um, and so my basic go-to mantra is it depends and research all the time. Um, but for particularly for SCAD, we do have our portfolio guidelines on the website, which I could share um, in the link chat. And then we also have portfolio samples to show you what our SCAD students have been posting for admission purposes. So you have a good referential point to begin with. Great, thank you so much uh, for that. And um, it definitely does depend because um, like I actually have always wondered how abstract art is judged. And um, that is something that's an ongoing curiosity of mine. I always also recommend students who are going into these fields to connect with current students or alumni in, in their regions or that they may know of because uh, they can also give them an idea or comment on their work um, if, if they do know them uh, personally. Great, so let's go on to the next question. Um, is UI covered uh, as well in, in those answers? Um, yes, okay. Great. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so this question is from Aditi and she asked, uh, this is for Kush, uh, Kushnam as well. Can you tell me something about the portfolio requirement for graduates at SCAD? And are uh, there any particular requirements to be kept in mind while creating one? So is there a distinction between an undergraduate uh, portfolio and a graduate portfolio? Particularly for SCAD, because undergraduates, we offer a foundation study year, which would enable the students to experience all our programs before they declare a major. So mm -hmm. at the undergraduate level, the genre of works can be very open-ended. It can be, you know, basically from any field of creative uh, fields or uh, works. But for masters, when you're stepping into a graduate program, we're expecting for you to know the basic requirements in terms of softwares, in terms of uh, maybe theory papers or trend reports for when it comes to fashion fields. So it would differ per degree that you're applying to, which is why, again, I'm gonna reiterate this, do check out the portfolio guidelines for every field because even if you're applying for, say, animation, the same portfolio may not work for illustration. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it sounds like I'm giving homework, but trust me, it's to your benefit if you research the website and check out what every university is looking for, um, just so that it maximizes your chances for admission as well as scholarships. Definitely. Thank you for that answer. And um, to kind of reiterate that um, in master's, you do need to look at the department. It's very important to look at the department requirements than more, more than anything else. Um, I do actually have a follow-up question of my own um, in addition, actually for all of you, um, because we have talked about transfers, we have talked about how important skills are when you are applying to certain programs. Um, there are a lot of students right now taking courses like online courses from universities such as Coursera or MOOC courses. Uh, do you think those uh, add weight to the application or are those some things you could um, accept as transfer uh, credits to your universities? maybe next year when they're ready to, uh, you know, like apply. So maybe if all the panelists could uh, answer that question for me. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is also just a weird year. So I think all universities are trying to be as accommodating and flexible as possible, um, especially right now with everything kind of being out of, out of our control. But mm -hmm. even in the whole time, mm -hmm. you know, as long as it, the, online courses are from an accredited university and, mm -hmm. and we can and they do transfer into something equal to us we will definitely look at those we'll look at any courses that a student has taken outside of their secondary school great great and just to piggyback on that um as you mentioned there were the the short courses on Coursera or you mm -hmm. know there are various other platforms where students can learn basic softwares um, you can display those works via a portfolio. However, it may not be possible to transfer an entire credit into the curriculum because what you learn through a software or a short course may not be, you know, in the global essence of um, industrial experience and work culture for that um, particular degree. So I would say, you know, um, it's, 
it's not like when it comes to transfers, we're also looking for the school accreditations and the kind of work experiences that have gone through with those uh, particular classes. And so where, for transfer, it would depend on those points. Great. Yeah, and, and I, I, I agree with uh, Kushnam about that as well, uh, especially for architecture again, because it's a, an accredited, NAB accredited degree. There's very few classes, even at like uh, other universities and community colleges that will be able to transfer in um, unless it's from another NAV accredited institution. Okay. Um, but with SBE um, and uh, uh, with like Coursera courses, sometimes they team up with uh, other institutions. Like it could be another like, you know, four year university. Uh, it really depends on what class you're, you're trying to bring in. Because when you transfer, you're looking for equivalency in classes. So that class that you took at that university is uh, about the same amount of units and goes over the same topics as the university that you're transferring into. So it, it really depends. Uh, but as far as architecture, most likely not. But that's not to say that Coursera doesn't have amazing um, opportunities to learn uh, and kind of be you know self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much for answering that question. I know that will definitely uh, benefit a lot of students who are looking at those things to fill up their time at this uh, at this very uh, kind of restricted uh, environment. Uh, so we have another question from uh, Satya Dev, and he asked to become a uh, practicing architect in the U.S. Does one have to take a professional exam after the bachelor's degree in architecture, like a bar exam for lawyers? So this is for Lewis. Yes. Uh, thank you for uh, asking that question. Yes. Uh, to become a, a licensed architect, you have to take an architectural regist registration exam. Uh, and that allows you to become a registered architect um, in, in one of the U.S. states. About 38 U.S. states require an AB accredited degree, and this could either be at the bachelor's level or in the master's level. Now, after completing a bachelor's of architecture or even a, a master's of architecture for that sake, you're, you're not required to, um, you know, continue your career in that trajectory. Some people, they may just be okay working under a licensed architect um, and as a designer. Uh, but if you want to lead the teams, if you want to, you know, put your stamp on a set of plans and expand your career, earnings, it's it's often recommended you, that you take the exam to become a licensed architect. So yes. Right. Thank you so much. And that is um, something that international students can do as well, right? Are there any restrictions for international students to take that exam? Um, I, I'm not sure because it usually depends on the state that you're trying to become registered in. Okay, great. Thank you. So yeah, again, I, yeah. Sorry, Go just ahead. one more point. For most of the art and design universities in the US, when you apply for a bachelor's and then do a ma master's degree program, there are options of an accelerated licensure for architecture. Mm -hmm. So again, going to sound mundane, but research those universities. Um, I can say for SCAD, we do have the B-Arch and M-Arch accelerated license um, where students get that opportunity in the six or seven years of experience at SCAD. However, I know with a traditional work experience, it takes about 11 to 15 years to get, um, to get that license to practice. And again, it depends per state um, where, you're apply where you're currently located. Right, great. Thank you for those answers. And uh, moving on, um, this is a more common question that uh, Charvi has asked. Will the internship be paid or just for experience? So uh, any internship opportunities that may uh, your universities may be providing, um, if, if there will be some sort of payment or the, are there some non like, you know, paid internships as well? Um, so at our university, we, for our program, since we are so focused on that experiential learning, we do require internships. Mm -hmm. um, some programs, one internship, some require two. So but again, like I, like I mentioned earlier, we are helping our students find those opportunities, especially international students who are not familiar with the area and the, the US-based companies. So, you know, in, in addition to helping them find those, we do do our best to make sure that they're actually co-ops, which is more of that paid internship. So although we can't guarantee that they will be paid, we do try and assist 
and get students to get that experiential learning and make some money at the same time. Um, but really the, the biggest value of that for an internship is getting that experience. That's the most important thing that a student should get out of, of an internship is getting that experience and, and the networking. And, you know, hopefully then if they're doing well at that internship, getting a job offer. So that's really the most important thing though. Great. Thank you. Can I add a point? Sorry, I'm too talkative. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, we love so, this. <laughs> um, for SCAD, we do have uh, paid internships. We do have, uh, for example, if there's a company that wants you to do uh, an unpaid internship, well, you could even transfer those credits into our curriculum. So technically, you're still gaining some value out of it. Um, additionally, for every course curriculum at SCAD, as we have internships, we also have the SCAD Pro collaboration, which are paid um, or credit transfer value. Great, thank you. Yeah, and, and at the University of Arizona, as you heard me mention, we have the job interview fair that's specifically to capital students. Um, and that's really our, our, again, our bridge to helping students locate those internships, mm -hmm. you know, putting you face to face with uh, employers at the local state and even at a state level. Um, so that's usually how students find their internships um, and work them over summer. And whether they're paid or not, that's really up to the, the, the firm that you're applying to. Definitely. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, I kind of uh, agree with all of these. Uh, universities will provide you all of the resources. There's no spoon feeding. So you will need to go up first and do your networking. Use the career centers, which are very, very proficient. And uh, use the alumni network um, in all of the different cities doing great things. Um, and put yourself out there. So it really depends, again, on uh, the firms that you get uh, end up uh, going to. And um, then the uh, after your, uh, like, you know, your uh, graduation, you are allowed to work for one year if you are a non-STEM major and plus two more years. So a total of three years if you're a STEM major. So do use, use those opportunities. I definitely did. So I did work in Chicago and I really liked that experience. So um, moving on to the next question, let's uh, hear from uh, Kritika. And she says that I am currently in 11th grade and I'll be applying for fall 2022. Uh, she has a few questions for SCAD and University of Arizona. What are the admissions requirements and what scores do they require? So I can maybe um, just start off the answer that you can find that information on the websites um, to uh, actually figure out uh, what are the average, uh, you know, like scores that students scored in the last year. Um, there is, it's a holistic uh, admission so you there won't be any specific requirements but maybe uh, both of you could elaborate a little bit more on how important um, maybe the supplements are or um, standardized testing is to admission so um, Lewis if you can go first and then Krishnan uh, you can yeah yeah uh, yeah so with architecture uh, specifically as you heard me mention it's just the 3.3 GPA um, that's what we're requiring for fall 2021. And I, I believe what we'll, we'll probably do for fall 2022. It's, it's actually the first year that we um, have that GPA requirement. Um, mm -hmm. As far as like test scores go, usually with the University of Arizona test scores uh, for standardized tests, uh, such as the SAT and ACT, uh, help with like scholarships. So that's usually how you would want to score higher um, mm -hmm. because it's, you're more likely to get a, a larger scholarship with that. But they're not required to get admitted into the program. Um, they're just to kind of supplement your, your uh, potential scholarship earnings. If I may add here, just, uh, you know, following up on Lewis, like uh, of course, uh, because of the COVID, uh, as Lewis said very correctly for admissions, of course, so, you know, the GPA is the most important thing, but so by far we were accepting SATs or ACTs for scholarships, but the university has plans to drop that requirement as well, considering the current situation. Mm -hmm. And we might start accepting applications, uh, which you don't have to apply separately. Once you apply, you are considered for application and your offer letter comes with the scholarship. And we might drop uh, our SAT, ACT requirement. And that particular information would be available on our website in next uh, one or two weeks. So please start, uh, you know, keep looking at our website to get the updates. But that's the update we have. And in terms of IELTS and TOEFL, of course, if you are very good in your English, you might get in a waiver. And again, because a lot of students are not able to write their TOEFL or IELTS, we also accept Duolingo. 
and that is something which is really convenient and you can submit those scores and we'll be happy to accept it only at undergrad level so far but not at master's level so that's the bit i wanted to add yeah Thank you so much. And I would just like to add to the GPA requirement, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that this is something because Indian students don't have GPAs, they have a marks that they get in school. You can just submit whatever uh, marks you have, your report cards from class 9 to 12. University of Arizona will calculate it themselves. So yeah. this is something that uh, a student asked, an advisee asked me, and I kind of went through your, uh, you know, like uh, to find this out, but uh, don't get intimidated by 3.0 GPA and try to convert it yourself because it's a very different conversion. It's a contextual uh, recruitment. So you will be judged as per say if another student from who has the same resources as you is going to be judged. So don't try to convert the GPA yourself, submit it as it is, and they will calculate themselves uh, the GPA for you. Uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, um, Anju. Yeah, you. generally it is, but just for your, I mean, our conversion, just for you to, you know, to make it easier, it's like three, GPA of three is equivalent to 75%, for example, for CBSE. Right. Right. Okay. So that's how it works, yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. But yeah, don't still apply. Don't get intimidated <laughs> by those. It's a contextual yeah. recruitment. So they will look at your school profile as well. So if totally. everyone has got, uh, like, you know, 50% and you've got 75%, that's, that shows something that will tell them something. Great. So Kushnam, if you would like to add to that. Um... Absolutely. And Unati, you're right. Um, we have an entire department that sits and calculates GPAs because yeah. <laughs> every university over here, like the representatives would agree, we get students from all over the world. And where you have um, GPAs, we, you know, there are students who have uh, they're from different boards, different curriculums with every country. So, you know, some have ABC grades, some have percentages, some have rainbows and clouds, but really that's not, you know, your worry at the moment. You just have to submit your transcripts, which would be your mark sheets from year 9, 10, 11 for us, uh, for SCAD. And uh, to come to Kritika's question, uh, for the admission, um, we're, SCAD is open for admission all year long. So you could even start your application today if you wish to. Um, if you've completed year 11, you could even get your admission decision maybe in the next one month. Um, and so primarily the required documents is just your 9th, 10th, 11th grades. And the letter that states your medium of instruction has been English in your high school because I know that giving TOEFL or IELTS score exams may be difficult uh, during the pandemic times. And we're really not emphasizing or providing scholarships for TOEFL or IELTS or SAT or ACT at SCAD because that's just to ensure that a student is proficiently, um, you know, well spoken in English to conduct classes at SCAD. Uh, but the supplemental documents would be for scholarship purposes only, which would be your portfolio and resume. And like I've mentioned before, but I'll just say it one more time, your portfolio at this very moment could have a range of artworks. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to stick to your uh, desired degree. In fact, my favorite students who join at the undergraduate level are all undecided because that just shows that they're open to exploration and experiences for every field before they declare a major. Great. Uh, I hope that answer. answers. Mm -hmm. I hope so too. And if you have any follow-up questions, you can type it in um, Kriti Kritika. So uh, Abo, the next question is by uh, Abonti and um, they have asked that which school board has an advantage in uh, SCAD, international or national? So if, um, yeah, Kushnam, Kush you well, um, Again, we're not comparing you to another course curriculum or a student. We're comparing your best uh, academic scores and your best portfolio works. So it really doesn't matter whether you come from a state board or from CBSE or IB curriculum. Uh, we're just looking for your academic GPA, as mentioned, to ensure that you have what it takes to study academically at SCAD. But we do emphasize and, um, you know, the reason why we segmented differently for scholarships, too, is because if a student really does not perform well in their academics, uh, which happens more so than known, where you may not be interested in physics or chemistry and your scores are low, 
but then we do uh, interview with you and talk about your uh, design portfolio, your artwork, so we know that you're creatively passionate for uh, SCAD. Great. Thank you so much. And um, uh, that is actually the whole uh, thing that it is a contextual recruitment. So whatever you have done, you've actually already baked the cake. Now it's just time to ice it and send it over to all of the admissions reps. So they can kind of uh, judge you based on what you already have and what you have done. So just do well in whatever you are already involved in right now. Um, we have a few more questions by Kriti, but I would actually encourage Kriti that uh, you please email uh, the admissions reps. Um, there are some questions about scholarship and class size. Um, so do uh, maybe we can quickly go over the class size, uh, the university size of each of you, and then we can move on to other um, students. We are kind of running low on time. So if, if everyone is okay, I would request maybe if we can stay back for another five uh, to seven minutes to complete uh, the question and answers. Is that okay? Okay, great. So um, just uh, maybe the class size um, of all of all of the universities. Yes, so total is 8,700 students. The class sizes range from um, 19 is the average in a lab and then in the lectures about 24 to 30. Great, thank you. After you, oh. Louis, I was just waiting. <laughs> Okay, th thank you. Uh, so at the College of Architecture, Plan and Landscape Architecture, we're actually one of the smallest colleges at the University of Arizona. So we have anywhere between 500 to 700 students uh, any given semester for our undergraduate and graduate programs. Uh, but coming into the classrooms um, that are sort of architecture focused, you wouldn't have more than about 20 to 25 students in your given studios. Now, some of the other classes that are more kind of general, you, you might have larger classes there, but the studio classes tend to be uh, pretty small because you work pretty closely with your faculty. Okay, thank you. For SCAD, we actually have the largest uh, student population, national, international, both. We have 15,000 students, uh, but our class ratios are seven to one for a master's program and 15 to one for an undergraduate program. Great. Thank you. So um, again, th this kind of information can be found on the university website. So do go and research these universities and what department you're interested in. So the next question is by Tanvi and it's for University of Wisconsin Stout. Can I know more about the structure of the MFA course? So if you are aware of that. Yeah, so the structure is, which I know students hate this question, but it really, um, there isn't really like a specific structure it's a two-year program. So it is that design, the Masters of Fine Arts. So again, you are able to really choose what kind of design you wanna study, whether it's graphic design, industrial design, interior design, um, any kind of design program that we offer. So that's five, five of our programs. So it's really specific to the student um, which is great. It's a hybrid course. So it's really also meant for students who maybe are also working, but you know, it's going to be some online, some on campus courses. Um, but you are, so you are able to come to the US and, and live in Menominee and, and take courses. So, you know, there isn't like at our website, if you look, there isn't a set requirement of courses because it is very different for every student. Um, it could just be like just graphic design with the Master of Fine Arts. Maybe you wanna combine graphic design with um, interior design or you know, some, combine some courses. So once you kind of decide what kind of design course you're interested in studying, you would work with our program director in the School of Art and Design to, to help handpick and choose the courses that you would need to, to get that Master of Fine Arts. Great. Thank you so much. And um, definitely it is uh, like, you know, the US curriculum is flexible. Uh, every student's uh, journey looks very different than the other. So uh, there will be some core required courses, but the rest of the courses you can kind of uh, pick and choose according to your own interests. Uh, so the next question um, is by Ar Arjun and he asks, does anyone have a course which covers both animation and design? So for whoever has that course. Go ahead, you can go first. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, we 
do. We do have, um, again, you know, animation is just one segment under the umbrella of design. But yeah, we do have animation. We have something related to animation as well called interactive design and game development, motion media design, immersive reality design, and visual effects. Um, I know, again, it sounds very overwhelming, but if you need any further um, knowledge about these fields, um, I'm more than happy to connect one-on-one -on -one and just help you understand what every major you know, defines. Great. Uh, so thank you for that. And um, the next question is by, okay, so another question is about how much weightage will be given on school grade portfolio resume, resume and SAT score. But just to answer that briefly, it is about, it is a holistic uh, admission. So there is no such formula. Again, you are applying to these creative schools. So for, there will never be a formula to kind of uh, answer that question for you. So definitely the better you do in each the better uh, your chances of being admitted to these universities. So the next question is by Ankur, how, they, uh, how do they consider STEM for graphic design and other related courses? What are the rules behind such courses? So um, I guess uh, regarding like how certain courses are considered STEM versus not. So um, I think graphic design was um, uh, Karen's um, university. So if you could just speak a little bit to that. Yeah, so our program is not, uh, our art and design programs are not STEM. I know SCAD had, you mentioned the um, STEM program, so I might actually just kind of hand that off to you since our programs are not the STEM program. Okay, go ahead. Sure, thank you, Karen. Um, at SCAD, we do have 13 programs that are recognized as STEM, which is, I know everyone knows that science, technology, engineering, math, but with graphic design, when it comes to web coding, when it comes to a few more uh, technology um, courses, we do have that integrated in our curriculum, which is why graphic design is a STEM uh, recognized degree. Great. Thank you so much for that answer. And the next question, um, we have just a few more questions left. So Rohini has asked a question about architecture and she has said, what are the marketable skills that will uh, aid the application for admission to the architectural degree programs at undergraduate level, especially in light of the fact that high school level does not offer any courses uh, which are uh, kind of aligned to these. And um, how will you will she be assessed uh, on the basis of her CBSC subject scores for the program in architecture? So are there anything that she can do or what are the skills she can highlight in her application? Yeah, so uh, again, we're not we're not looking specifically uh, off the bat for any specific like courses. You're not required to do any like architecture related courses in your high school curriculum. A lot of the skill set you're gonna learn within the program, uh, we just have that GPA mark because with architecture and being a professional degree, it is pretty uh, time consuming and we are gonna ask uh, you to complete a lot of projects uh, mm -hmm. in the program. So a lot of the preparation for the career you'll get within the program, uh, there's not much that we're not really asking out anything outside of like your your uh, your grade point average um, on the architecture side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do recommend that if you have availability to take uh, graphic design classes, if uh, a high school does offer drafting classes um, or art classes, those are great ways to kind of start learning some of the skill sets that you'll get in architecture, but they're not required um, to get within the architecture program. Right. Great. Thank you so much for that um, answer. And definitely transferable skills are what uh, I think will be most helpful. So do things that you have available to you. Definitely, there are so many online options now to do these programs and gain those skills. So do uh, display them to make your application stronger. Uh, we just have um, two more questions. So one is by Charvi, and um, she has asked, what if a person's marks are not consistent? Um, and uh, she did not get the best both scores. So just I can quickly answer that, that uh, like all of the panelists have already mentioned, uh, really it does not, your application does not uh, depend on one score or one board exam marks. They're going to look at it holistically and they're going to be many, many different things. Like for example, if you're applying to a design course, maybe your marks may not matter as much as your portfolio does. So do definitely look into those kind of things and wherever you have some shortcomings, be willing to explain that and show why those kind of uh, fallbacks did happen. Because um, 
maybe you are not good at test taking and that does not matter in your application and your willingness to learn. So the last question is uh, about, um, I think this is something that um, Kushnam has already touched upon, but does the undecided major affect the admission? So I also actually have uh, many advisees who are uh, in these two minds that should we go in undecided or should we go in with a particular um, major? Does that actually uh, make you judge a student differently? So uh, quickly, if Kushnam could answer that question. I'm going to answer in terms of like all universities in the US, you may want to research them mm -hmm. uh, because there are a couple of universities that would require for you to declare your major before you begin classes. However, at SCAD, we offer a foundation year, which is the first year. Mm -hmm. So you do have an entire year to understand all these degree programs, try it out and know which is your best fit. So at, for our university, uh, just knowing three interests would be good enough, but all our undergraduate freshman students come as undecided. Great. And um, if any other panelists would uh, like to add to that, like um, in the next few minutes, uh, then we can wrap up. Yeah, I, I would add with the architecture program specifically, because it's five years and there's a, a pretty set and rigid curriculum, if you are thinking about you want, uh, trying our architecture, I would recommend that you come in a, as an architecture major. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you, you know, try out that first semester and you see that it's kind of not the subject that you want to do, then you can do a change in major. But uh, right. it, it, it doesn't affect whether you come in undecided or with a major, you know, you're still going to be kind of looked at the same, but mm -hmm. it just helps in terms of time. Right. Great. Thank you. Okay, uh, Karen, if you just want to quickly add something. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, really, we just, you know, we're not going to look at you any differently as an applicant, depending on the major. It's really just, you know, finding a university that has a lot of options that interest you. That's really the most important. So if you are undecided, look at all the academic programs that the university offers. And if there are, you know, several that, that do spark an interest in, in you, then that would be definitely a great place to start. Yeah, and, and let me just uh, reiterate this part that this is only for undergraduate students. Undecided, you cannot go undecided as a master's or a PhD student. It's very important to have a specific area of interest when you're going into those kind of majors. Even for programs like architecture, you need to kind of um, declare it before going in. When I, I studied at a liberal arts university and I uh, went in uh, with a certain set of interests in mind and when I declared my major, I was paired with an academic mentor who was in that major. And again, it is flexible. So you can uh, change it uh, when you enter university. So for within a year and a half, you can actually experiment with what you like, what you don't like. You're not expected as a 17 year old to exactly know your life plan and it's fine. You know, <laughs> you will figure it out, it's fine. So with that, I would like to draw this uh, webinar to a close. So thank you so much all our panelists for this really interesting webinar. We will do more in-depth sessions uh, regarding each of these programs uh, in the future uh, whenever we have an opportunity. This was just kind of touching the base of all of these different art and design programs. So don't feel overwhelmed. Um, uh, having heard so much information and do stay in touch with the panelists uh, if you have more further questions and feel free to contact me as well. I have put down my email address there as well. So thank you so much everyone and good night and uh, Karen have a good uh, day and Luis as well. <laughs> thank you and I yeah I will also be at the education fair so I hope to see everyone there tomorrow and Saturday as well. Yeah please attend the yeah. undergraduate application uh, ed undergraduate education fair. <laughs> <laughs> I've been promoting it for too long that I've forgotten the name. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank bye. You. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.